Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is category theory, actually to the last video on this playlist. Um, and I would like to tell you about another application of categories, this time in signal processing. So uh, kind of a really fun application of the language of categories or some language associated to categories. So the topic is props or are props. And we'll see what props are uh, using the language of categories. Kind of a nice idea. So here, I have a prop graph, if you want, or a signal flow graph, SFG for short. And it's really just this thing with the input. So my reading convention here is from left to right. So input and output, I'm reading this way. So there should be some input here. Here downstairs, I have an XY input, and there will be some output here, and you can read off the output here. So it's a 15X and uh, whatever this thing is. So here's an output, uh, 3X plus 21, uh, 21 times Y. And this is how it works. So it's a graph. It's a certain type of graph, which should already remind us of monoidal categories. And yeah, there will be a monoidal category. Just give it a second. Um, so it's, it's a graph and it's made out of certain coupons with numbers and trivalent vertices, either black or white. Or if you want, one of them is like a fork to the, to the right and the other one is like a fork to the left, whatever. And you just stack them together in any way. It gives you some reasonable diagram like this. And what it does is the following, or what you, how you should think about it. It's kind of mimicking, or it's kind of a way to mimic multiplication, addition, and so on. So you stick in some input, X and Y, some numbers. And whenever you hit a black vertex, you just, just split it off into two ways. Whenever you hit a, a white vertex, you just add whatever you see, right? Remember, we're reading in this direction. So X and 7Y is this guy. And whenever you go through a coupon, you just multiply. So the next edge here would be 5x. And then, of course, times 3, you end up with 15x and so on. So this is really a way to mimic multiplication in a diagrammatic way, right? So um, just merges and splits. Those forks here, they kind of mimic addition, for example. And the coupons mimic multiplication. And you kind of can um, associate a certain calculation to a certain graph and a, gra a certain graph to a certain calculation. That's the whole whole idea of those signal flow graphs. And yeah, the name already suggests that these are kind of signals flowing here. It's kind of the main idea anyway. And the point is why they are so applicable is that they, they can kind of uh, model matrix multiplication. So you can model matrix multiplication using those funny graphs. And the way it works is, well, A is of course multiplication by A, uh, and those guys are those vectors. I uh, haven't explained uh, the additional ones here that show up kind of the creation and then an annihilation operator, whatever. But for example, the matrix A, B, C, D, um, it takes an input X, Y, right? It can, you can multiply it with a vector X, Y. And if you read through this diagram, what will come out is exactly this multiplication here, uh, A, B, C, D times X, Y. So this little graph here, is a representation of this matrix. So it's kind of a pretty cool way of thinking about it. And the whole calculus as a category would encode the category k mat, so matrices. Um, and this matrix multiplication is modeled by those graphs. And this is exactly, of course, or well, maybe not of course, but this is exactly how they then show up in pr practice because, well, matrix multiplication is just everywhere. Really, matrix multiplication is everywhere. I promise you, it's really everywhere. And yeah, this is just a really cool way of illustrating uh, matrix multiplication, in particular in the following way. So keep on keep this diagram in mind. It will look slightly different on the next slide. Just keep it in mind. It's a matrix multiplication diagram. You have those little building blocks of this diagram, right? So those, those guys here, for example, and you can realize them. So here you have, again, those five, uh, those four. <laughs> I can't count. One, two, three, four uh, coupons from before. So the A, B, C, D coupons. Um, and this is kind of a classical picture you see in signal processing. And you can think of that this could be actually an, a chip, a chip of a computer or something, where each little building block, so a coupon or a merge split, is actually doing some operation. Uh, and what people really do, and it's really a really something people do in practice. So here's again, input and output, just again, a different convention because people never can agree on a convention. That's just what it is. Anyway, so here's input and here's output. Uh, and it's really this, this thing would do a matrix multiplication in this case. 
And the point is you can now, not just that you can model it using, um, well, category theory, as we will see, but you can now think of this as building a corresponding analog computer, which would model this matrix multiplication by just saying each one of those guys here and each one of those guys, so basically the basic building blocks here, they correspond to a certain type of chip, uh, analog chip that Analog really just means you use whatever electrons or so to, to store the information and each one of them corresponds to a certain chip and the whole configuration then is a matrix multiplication chip, which is a pretty cool idea. So this is, for example, used in machine learning um, where usually huge matrix multiplications must be done and analog computers can do them much faster um, than digital computers. So the kind of the difference between analog computers and digital computers is analog computers are very efficient and very fast for a simple task, for a singular task, while digital computers can do many, it's kind of a multitasking thing, but they're not really efficient and they're also not very fast. So if you just want to do matrix multiplication and this analog computer built on those graphs is actually much more efficient. And that's how it shows up in practice. Uh, right, okay, so let's formulate everything in terms of categories. And the way to formulate everything in terms of categories is to have this definition of a prop, which basically is a symmetric monoidal category on N, that's the number of inputs and kind of the addition here and the multiplication is the addition. And you can model it by using string diagrams exactly in the same way as uh, well, I've shown it on the previous pages, just that you can allow arbitrary inputs, not just my basic inputs that I had before here. Um, so these SVGs are special special props. And this really is a language people use. So string diagrams in this prop language, um, and then you can specialize to those flow graphs, which then mimic matrix multiplication. Pretty cool trick, right? So here, for example, G tensor it, G tensor it, and so on. The symmetry, symmetric monoidal, tensor it, it and G again, and then it and H, or you can think of any type of fancy diagram you have in mind. Okay, cool. And you can do pretty cool things with those. So for example, you can write down a, a presentation for maybe our all favorite gallery. Well, I hope it's, well, it's certainly my favorite. Is it my favorite gallery? It's certainly among my favorites. Anyway, so finite dimensional vector spaces, which is a uh, um, kind of a different incarnation of matrices. And you could prove the following theorem, which is kind of a beautiful theorem. So this category is generated by, uh, as a prop, generated by uh, those diagrams, right? So it's really these flow graphs, modulo some relations, some very natural relations actually uh, that I've just written. Well, I, I haven't, I then stole and put on the slide, uh, kind of very nice and appropriately formulated. This gives you a diagrammatic incarnation of um, the category of vector spaces or finite dimensional vector spaces, which actually works over any ring. That's why my source had a ring here. And I, I just decided to just put a K. You could think of it as working over any ring. You could think of it as working over Q, whatever, whatever you prefer. Point is you get this really, really efficient way of encoding a whole category using props. And I mean, K vector spaces, finite dimension K vector spaces, matrices. Yes, that's applicable everywhere. And in particular, as I said, uh, using this idea of on the graph itself, you can model an, an analog chip, for example. It's pretty cool. Okay, let me wrap up this final video. So props are a cool way of thinking about, well, really honest real world applications like matrix multiplications using analog chips uh, in terms of the language of category theory. And there's even some nice category theory going on. Namely, this generator and relation presentation of the category of matrices. In any case, I really hope you enjoyed this uh, video series and thank you very much for making it to the end together with me. I hope it was reasonably enjoyable. I hope it was a very nice trip and at least I learned a lot and I enjoyed it a lot. As I said, I hope you enjoyed it a lot as well. And anyway, I hope you also enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.